Welcome back to Mastering the Young Band. Today's episode is going to be beginner trombone formation. Um, when I start with my beginners, we just start trombones, we don't start euphonium. Um, what happens is usually around December, I switch two to three trombones over to euphonium. They're kids that I handpick, and it's pretty much kids that I know are gonna continue playing into band. That way I know I'm gonna have euphoniums, and I have a limited number of euphoniums here in my school. So it's a way of making sure I put the right kids on euphonium and that that instrument's being used really well for a kid that's playing the continuum. So for beginning trombone, um, the first thing that we do at my school is I give them locker mirrors. And that way they can hold up a nice small mirror, that way they can see what they're doing with their mouth. I like to use a stepwise progression because my classes at my school are not um, pure homogeneous where I have just a flute class and just a trombone class. Um, for instance, my trombones are mixed in with tuba and flute. Some years I've had low brass with percussion. It's, it kind of varies, but this year it's gonna be trombone, tuba, and flute. So my trombones, I've already taught them good posture. I give them their mirror, teach them two fingers and a thumb to hold the mirror. And then the first step that I do with brass is I have them say lick. So we lick our lips, that's step one. Step two, I have them say the word wuh. And what I have them do without looking at their mirror or trying it, I say watch what happens when I say wuh, wuh. And I talk to them about the dry part of my lip and I have them touch the dry part of their bottom lip. And then I have them touch the wet part of their bottom lip. What I talk about, what I'm doing, wah, what I'm doing, wah, is I'm getting my bottom lip in front of my bottom teeth and it's stretching just a little bit. Now I know that panics some of you that are trombone players thinking, no, there shouldn't be a stretched embouchure. It's just a way of getting that lip ready. You'll see once we start buzzing that it's not gonna be that tight and constrict. So step one is lick. Step two, wah. And what I do, I have the kids hold up the mirror. I'll say step one, they say lick. Step two, they say wuh. And then I'll tell them, get your finger, push against the dry part of your bottom lip. If you're pushing against the dry, you should feel your teeth behind your lip. If you don't feel your teeth, you're either rolling in or you're pushing out. Those are usually the variations you get with kids. You get kids that suck in their bottom lip or you get kids that push it out. So, okay, step one, lick. Step two, wuh. And I walk around the room, I go, look at mine, now look at yours. Look at mine, look at yours. And I have them compare. And I'll tell them to hold it, and then relax, do it again. Mirrors up, step one, lick. Step two, wuh. And I'll start walking around the room and going, yes, great, good. Oh, you're sucking in your lip a little bit. Oh, you're pushing out your lip. You'll get some kids that overstretch like this, and I'll say, oh, you're stretching too much, just a little bit, don't overdo it. And then we'll practice some wrong variations. So as a class, we'll purposely do the suck inversion. So what I'll do is go, okay, raise your hand when you see what's wrong with this. Step one, lick. Step two, whoa. And they all raise their hands and they'll say, what's wrong with that? You're sucking in your lip. Let's purposely suck in our lip. And we'll do a variation where we suck in our lips. Then I'll say, okay, raise your hand when you see what's wrong with this one. Step one, lick. Step two, whoa. And they'll raise their hands. What's happening? You're pushing out your lip. Correct. Okay, now let's do the right version. Here we go, everybody. Step one, lick. Step two, whoa. And then I, for a couple of days, I actually do it down the row where I go to each kid and they have to hold the whoa. What I'll usually do is we'll do, I'll do about 10 of them. My trombone classes are usually between 20 and 30 trombone players. So I'll go step one, lick. Step two, whoa. And then I'll go down the row and go, good, good. Oh, you're sucking your lip in a little bit. Can you fix that? Yes, that's it, good. Remember what that feels like. Next, and I'll go through 10, they'll go, okay, everybody relax. Then I'll tell them, okay, posture check, fix your posture, mirrors up. Step one, lick. Step two, wuh. And they'll go to the next kids, good, good. And I give them feedback on what they're doing with their lip. I don't always um, show that to them. However, I do start pointing out that their chin is flat as a result of their lip placement. When trombones are playing, you do want their chin flat. If you see when I suck in my lip, or I push out my lip, you'll see I don't have a nice flat chin. So if your kid doesn't have a flat chin, they're not positioning their lip correctly. They're either sucking in or they're pushing it out. So step one is lick, step two is wuh. Step three, I have them say the word 
Mm. And what I tell them, I show them first, so watch me, step one, lick. Step two, toe. Step three, mm. And I show them, you can see the dry parts of both lips. I'm just touching my lips together. I am not squeezing them tight. I'm not rolling them in, I'm not pushing them out. I'm just touching them. What? Mm. And I'll do it wrong, so I'm not doing this. Mm. I'm not doing this. Mm. It's just, mm. and I can see the dry part of my top and bottom lip. So that's the next thing I'll go down the row. So go, okay, everybody, step one, lick. Step two, toe. Step three, mm. hold it. Good, good. Oh, you're pushing your lips too tight. Just have them touch, good. And we'll go down the row and I'll check that. I try not to move to each step until I see at least 90 to 95% of the kids are doing it right. If there's a small number of kids that are, aren't quite doing it, I will still move on um, with those kids just because sometimes they need extra repetition and they'll get it after a day or two. And then when they do get it after a day or two, I really celebrate, yes, your lip, that's the best your lip has looked. And we'll talk about it that way and just frame it positively. So step one is lick, step two is wuh, Step three is mm, and then step four, what I do, I have my kids start on their mouthpiece and a tube. This is just landscape tubing that I got from a hardware store. This one is for landscape, um, this is for landscape irrigation tubing. And what I recommend you do is if you're interested in taking tubing, take your mouthpieces with you so you can be in the hardware store and making sure that it's fitting. Take a horn mouthpiece, take a trumpet, take a trombone, take a tuba, and you'll find the tubes that fit. This particular one that I use um, will actually fit the large shank trombone. I start my trombones on F attachment trombones, and it'll also fit the tuba mouthpiece. If I used a regular tenor trombone, I'd have to get a little bit of a smaller tube because it'd be too loose in there. So we get our tubes. I teach them about their mouthpiece. This is the rim, this is the cup, this is the stem. I teach them right away to push and twist, even in the tube, it doesn't matter, but they just learn. Then what we do, we hold our mirrors, two fingers and a thumb with our left hand, and then we hold our tubes with our right hand, two fingers and a thumb. So we get two fingers and a thumb, and I teach them to hold it onto the tube. Why is it important for your kids to all hold them in the same hands? So that way, as you look down a row, if you're looking and they're all holding it the same, you can actually see that entire row's embouchures. If each kid is holding it a different direction, you're not gonna be able to see as many kids at once. And also, if kids do this, as you can see, you can't see my embouchure. When I got two fingers and a thumb, I can still see the chin, I can see everything. So we have to get everything away so that we can see it. Left hand mirror, right hand two fingers and a thumb with a two. Now, what I teach for their vibration, first of all, I call it vibration, not a buzz. So I say, we're gonna vibrate our lips, and here's how you do it. The analogy I give them is their bottom lip is like the floor of a garage. Their top lip is like the garage door. So I'll say, here's the garage door, or the garage floor, I should say. Here's the door. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna slowly open the garage door, that's your top lip, until you start vibrating. And then I'll show it to them without a mouthpiece. And of course, the first time they do that, they giggle and you know, kids will laugh. And I'll say, okay, watch it again. This is the floor of the garage. This is the garage door. So I just kind of show them that I'm slowly opening up that garage door to create the vibration. Now, something I'm not gonna talk about in this video that I've talked about in some of my other videos is the two count breath. And I do start my beginners breathing through their nose, not through their mouth. That way they don't change their embouchure. We stay on the nose for about a month, month and a half, about six weeks before I transition them to breathing through the corners of their mouth. So here's what it'll look like. The first time we do it, we go mirrors up, we check our posture. Step one, lick. Step two, toe. See the dry part of your lip? Flat chin. Step three, mm. Step four, and then I go one, Two. One, two. 
I do that with a metronome on, by the way. I start at tempo 72. That way a metronome is going. We talk about how I go one, two. I breathe in through two counts on my nose. I hold. And then slowly open that garage door. Why do I have them hold at the beginning? What it does is it gets their corners firm and so they don't explode their air. If you move beginners too quickly into the vibration, they'll do this. And they'll just burst that out. And that's a hard habit to break. When you start them with the garage door closed, they automatically firm up their corners and they don't explode. When I do this method, I maybe have one or two kids out of 25 to 30 trombones that puff their cheeks. The rest of them keep it in. And even the ones that puff, once I show them, they fix it. So I really recommend after the two count breath, they hold and then slowly open that garage door. And we do that for quite a few days to make sure that this starts getting strong and that way they don't start exploding their air at the beginning. So step one is lick, step two is toe, step three is mm, step four is to place it. And what we will do is we'll go I play, you play, um, and I make sure that um, after I play, there's four counts of rest in between so I can count off and they can do their two count breath. So I don't have kids here, but here's what it would sound like. Step one, lick. Step two, toe. Step three, mm. Step four, metronome would be going. One, two. One, two, nose closed. Slowly open, and the kids would slowly open to vibrate. Then my turn. One, two, stay closed, slowly open the garage door and they slowly open it to get the vibration. It is so fun to watch this process because well over 90% of the kids have firm corners, they have a flat chin, they don't puff their cheeks, and they really slot the note pretty close to a concert F. It's really cool. Something I like to do around day four of this is I actually drone an F on my harmony director with the metronome going to 72. I'll match the F when I vibrate and the kids will match it. It is the most amazing things how kids, they just, they hear it and they're able to match it without even talking much about what they're doing with their embouchure. It's so cool. I do it with all of my brass players and every one of them can pretty much match right away. After their embouchure is formed pretty well with the garage door closed and then slowly opening, then we go to what I call the immediate vibration. That's where they breathe for two and then they vibrate right away. I talk to them about not exploding and in their mirrors, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for to make sure that they're not puffing their cheeks exploding. So we'll go to the immediate vibration. Once they're strong enough, they understand how to vibrate without puffing their cheeks. And then of course, the next step after that are sirens. And we'll do sirens on our tubes too. One, two. And same thing, that one I actually drone right away. On my harmony director, I'll drone an F and a B flat. And what we'll talk about is we'll talk about the air direction for the F being pretty straight. And to get to the B flat, you slowly aim your air to up just a little bit, which opens up your jaw. And that's what drops you down into that lower note. We talk about the middle and lower note. I don't worry too much about the note names at the beginning. So we do quite a bit with slurs on the tube. And then once this is looking pretty strong, then we go to the instruments and same thing. I will drone an F the first time we play on their trombone and over 90% of the kids play an F right away. The way I teach my embouchure, I either get kids on the F or I do get a few on the B flat. Rarely do I get anybody on the low B flat. Um, when kids go to the low B flat too often, they're puffing their cheeks and they don't have the control here. So if you follow this system with the garage door, they're gonna slot their note right in that middle F partial or possibly the B flat. But once you start doing sirens and they understand the mechanism and the airflow, they're gonna really get that F to B flat really consistently. So I hope that helps you. I've been using this for my beginners for over 20 years. And it, anything you do, if you're getting over a 90% success rate, it's a really good system. So if you're looking for a new system to start your trombones, 
try that this school year and see how it goes. For me, I've had a tremendous amount of success. It gets the kids right where they need to be, and you're not having to fix anything strange in their embouchure. Be sure to check out my band website uh, where I have some of my personal warm-ups like my Essential Foundations book. Uh, that's MikePerezBand.com. And um, I'm also going to be starting an Instagram channel that you can check out there as well too. So hope you found this useful. Take care.